What is it that uh, ma made you want to choose this project? Um, well, I didn't choose it. I, I wanted to, I saw potential in this idea of this graphic novel. And I, I think I wanted to develop something that had a protagonist very close to what Lorraine was in that graphic novel. Um, somebody that could be a female protagonist that lives and breathes in a world that are mostly dominated by males um, and kind of live in an environment where she can play by the same rules as all the boys do in that world. So somebody unapologetic and interesting and layered and conflicted and, you know, somebody struggling with her own humanity. I think it was all of those things that make, made me want to develop a character like that. Well, please describe your character, Lorraine Broughton. I think I just did. <laughs> <laughs> you did, but yeah. I you. Yeah, I mean, I think she's really good at her job. She works for MI6, and she has made peace with the fact that she chose this world, and it's a tough world to live in, especially for a woman, and she, uh, she's good at it, and she likes doing it, and she carries the consequences of it and owns all of that, and I think there's something really empowering about her. Espionage is such a hugely thrilling subject. Are you a fan of that genre? Yeah, I do. I like the spy thriller aspect of it. I'm also, I think, fascinated by how you can kind of take those stories and turn them on their heads a little bit because I think um, we've seen a lot of um, the kind of spy genre thriller-esque films and how they kind of go from one act to the third act and and I think I was interested in how you could take that and maybe not just in the story, but also on the look and the feel of what those movies usually look like, how you could turn that on its head and make it something super energetic and fun. Did you do any research um, in Spycraft? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't do any research per se on, you know, how they walked or, I don't know, like silly things. I was more interested just in the kind of people who decide to do that job. I think it takes a certain personality to want to do that job and to also be good at that job. And um, there were some interesting things when I, once I started reading about, um, especially this time um, for a lot of um these kind of operatives who would go into areas where their agencies would kind of just abandon them. And a lot of them at the time were more um, prompted to take the job if they were um, having issues in their family life or if they were uh, maybe dealing with alcoholism or um, you know, something that would kind of make them almost self-combust. And so that was an interesting idea. And, and once we started shooting it, I understood why. It's a, it's a tough, cold world to kind of be in. Did you look at the graphic novel source material, The Coldest City, at all? Well, yes, I read, um, I read a couple of pages that were sent to us. It was an unpublished graphic novel at the time, and that's what sparked um, the idea to want to buy the rights and develop um, Atomic Blonde. The fight scenes were so realistic. Broughton fought to survive, using anything within her reach to help her, even a watering hose. How hard was it to physically train for this film, and what was it like? Yeah, it was tough. I mean, I, I, um, I wanted to do this in a way that was believable, um, and I knew that it was going to take a lot of work to be able to fight like that. And I never wanted anybody to be able to say a woman couldn't do that. And so that was important. And I think that would was what drove me to want to. Um, be as capable as I ended up being um, physically in making the film. How long before um, shooting did you start to train? I trained for about two and a half months and then I kind of continued that as we were making the film. Being a stuntman himself, did that make it easier to work with director David Leach or because of that did he even push you harder? Both, you know, it made it easier just because he knew where to put a camera. He knew how to shoot stunts and action. Uh, he, I think he's so comfortable in that world um, that he has an eye for it. He really definitely has a passion for it. Um, but yeah, no, I think, I think maybe in other hands, I wouldn't have 
been pushed as hard and I wanted that. I wanted somebody to expect more from me and push me more and he was amazing at doing that. How was working with Sofia Botella? Just great. I absolutely love her. We, we were very lucky in finding her because the role of LaSalle was very tricky. It had to be somebody who had a strength about them but also an incredible vulnerability. And in, in a way, she had to be completely broken but yet fully functioning in the story. And that's tough to find somebody who can have that duality. And she has it in spades. She's so beautiful in this film. 